But if there are some songs like that, there may be some good cowboy song, but the greatest ones, of course, are the hymns of the church that instill the Spirit of the Lord in the one who's singing. And I might quickly add, there is music of the devil himself. And do not misunderstand that and try to count it or call it something else. It is music of the devil himself. I have come to mind an experience that happened to me a few years ago with a man whom I'm, I would, I'll name only to speak evil of what he was doing, not of the man. I would not want to be out of order in speaking evil of the man. I suspect there may almost not be anyone here that doesn't know the man. He's one of the fam most famous rock stars in all the world that I spent two and a half hours with on a plane proselyting him. And his name is Mick Jagger in the Rolling Stones. How many know who Mick Jagger is? I know some of these older fellows over here don't. <laughs> but most did. <laughs> Well, when I got on the plane with this fellow, I didn't recognize him right off. And again, I'll just have to tell you this story in, in great brevity because I had two and a half hours with him and it was an interesting experience. I didn't recognize him right off, first thing. I told him I was an elder in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Who are you? And he told me Mick Jagger. And I said, well, I'm glad to meet you too. <laughs> and he was kind of a proudful fellow. And I'm not speaking again of the man, but of what he was doing. And he told me his name again, and I said, Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mick. And it still didn't totally dawn on me. I just wasn't expecting to see him there. And then he opened up this big magazine he was reading with all these wild-eyed faces and very scantily dressed women, to say the least, and said, That's me. And, of course, I recognized immediately who he was. We began talking. I told him, I have opportunity over the years to be with many young people all over the world. I'm interested in a question you could answer for me. He said, well, what is it? I said, some of the young people I'm with tell me that <coughs> rock music, the kind you and others are involved in, has no real impact on them. For good or for evil, it has no real impact. And others claim that it really does have a bad impact on them. You've been in this thing for 20 years. I'd like to know, what's your opinion? These were his exact words, brothers and sisters, an exact quote. He said, our music is calculated to drive the kids to sex. I was pretty much floored. I'm sure I must have shown it on my face. And then he kind of rebounded a little bit and he says, of course, it's up to them what they do. It's not my fault. I'm just earning a lot of money. And as the conversation proceeded, and again, there's not time to tell you all, even a small part of it. He was delighted at the fact, in his mind, the family was being destroyed around the world. I told him I had eight children. He told me he had some too, but no wives. I told me he had a woman pregnant in Virginia, another one in New York, and one in England. I told me he'd had the missionary lessons, some of them. I didn't believe that in the beginning in England, is what he said, but as I questioned him further, I think he was telling the truth. After he'd had three or four drinks, he said quite loudly in the cabin, Anybody that believes the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God is a liar. And the Book of Mormon is a lie. And I remember, as you would have done, prayerfully thinking in my heart, what shall I say? How can I respond to that? And I remember saying something like this back to him, Mick, you are mighty fortunate today. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, because you're sitting next to a servant of the Lord who's going to correct what you just said. Because it isn't true. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, I happen to have a Book of Mormon in my briefcase. And I pulled one out and laid it on his lap. I think because of maybe the drinking, and he also looked sick physically. The book was going about like that on his lap. And I said to him, I must have missed that chapter, because I read this book many times, and I believe it to be the Word of God. And if there is such a chapter, I want to see it. Of course, there was dead silence. He couldn't say a word. And I said, well, then how about one page? How about one paragraph? How about one line? How about one word? Mick, I bear testimony, you're the liar. The Book of Mormon is the Word of God. And I told him the best I could. The Lord would hold him responsible for his acts to the degree he understood what he was doing if he didn't turn his life around. Now it's evidence from the following years that followed that he didn't listen. But that doesn't change anything because that down the plane he lied about this book. And I vowed to myself, 
and I'm thankful my family have abided by it, that we would never have any of that music in our home or anything like unto it. We've been blessed that way as a family. If you maybe have misjudged music or thought perhaps it wasn't that bad, believe the brethren. I bear witness to you again. There is good music in the world, the classical things, some of these romantic songs that I said I like, some of the old cowboy songs I like to sing and again make my family laugh. I love to sing the hymns more of all, most of all because they bring the Spirit of the Lord to me and when I'm discouraged or not feeling up, all I've got to do is be exposed a little bit to some of that great music from the hymns of the church and the Spirit of the Lord seems to descend upon me and will upon you.